submarines, the underwater killers of World War II. Submarines were crucial to both the Allies and the Axis powers during World War II. The German Navy would build 1,156 U-boats, of which 784 were lost from enemy action or other causes. Nazi U-boats hit no less than 3,474 Allied ships, sinking enemy ships in areas as distant as the Dutch East Indies and the Arctic Ocean. On the Allied side, U.S. submarines sank 1,314 Japanese Navy and merchant ships in the Pacific, with submarines accounting for decimating 60% of Japan's merchant Navy fleet, severely crippling the Japanese war economy. During the conflict, submarine warfare was widespread, deadly, and merciless. But after the end of the war, it just seemed to stop. While submarines continue to be an integral part of navies around the world, there have been only two submarines that sank enemy ships in combat since. The PNS Hangor. The first submarine since 1945 to successfully engage an enemy boat was from Pakistan, the PNS Hangor, a French-built diesel-electric Daphne-class boat. The attack took place in the Arabian Sea during the 1971 Indo-Pakistani War. The Pakistani Daphne-class vessel displaced 1,043 tons, had a top speed of 16 knots, and had 12 22-inch torpedo tubes, eight forward, four aft, each preloaded. Hangor was the lead ship of her class, which included two other subs, the Shushuk and the Mangro, both commissioned in 1970. The vessel's first wartime deployment was in August 1971 during the conflict with India. It was tasked with gathering intelligence on the Indian Navy and clearing Menorah Island and Ormara Bay in the coastal areas of Pakistan. Hangor was again deployed on November 26, 1971, when it sailed from its base in Karachi laden with torpedoes. Its mission was to patrol the harbor of what was then called Bombay, today Mumbai. On its side, India had two British-built Blackwood-class frigates, the INS Kukri and the INS Kirpan, patrolling the Indian Ocean with one sole purpose, to hunt and sink Pakistani submarines. On December 4, 1971, Pakistani Navy headquarters communicated with Hangor, giving the submarine war codes to attack the Indian Navy's fleet. On December 9, 1971, the PNS Hangor detected two Indian frigates near its position. At around midnight, Commander Tasneem ordered Hangor to dive deep and carry out a blind, that is, sonar-only, approach, as the torpedo team concentrated on tracking the two targets as they gradually came within firing range. Hangor fired a torpedo at the INS Kirpan, which successfully dodged it. The INS Kukri then launched a counterattack against the submarine. In retaliation, the submarine sent a torpedo at the Kukri. Shortly before the impact, Hangor detected the direct, frantic orders of the Indian frigate's captain, M. N. Mula, who sought to commence evasive maneuvers. However, it was too late for the Indian frigate. This time, Hangor scored a successful hit. The INS Kukri started sinking. Kirpan tried to counterattack the sub once more, hoping to engage the Pakistani sub with a hasty dropping of a depth charge, but a third torpedo locked onto Kirpan's tail, followed by a loud explosion. It wasn't a direct hit, but there was still substantial damage to the Kirpan, which forced the frigate to flee the battle scene by turning west towards deep waters. Indian and Pakistani reports would later disagree over just how badly the second frigate was damaged. After the attack, the PNS Hangor had made its getaway. The INS Kirpan, along with INS Kachal, returned to the scene the next day to attempt a rescue operation, but to no avail. The Hangor was hounded by India's western fleet all the way back to its base in Pakistan. The cruiser INS Mysore even passed directly over the submarine while trying to carry out the search and destroy mission that the Indian Navy was now on. The Pakistani sub's commander, Ahmed Tasneem, would later say, quote, An extensive air search combined with surface ships made our life miserable, but with intelligence-based evasive action we managed to survive these attacks and arrived in Karachi safely after the ceasefire. Although Hangor successfully sank the Indian frigate, India still went on to win the war. The result was the partition of East Pakistan from Pakistan and the formation of what is today the sovereign state of Bangladesh. PNS Hangor, Pakistan Navy designation S-131, was nicknamed the Shark and served in the country's navy from 1969 until its decommissioning in 2006. Pakistan still reveres Hangor as a winning vessel and the submarine is today a museum ship at the Pakistan Maritime Museum in Karachi. 
The sub received the highest number of operational gallantry awards ever given to a single Pakistan Navy warship. The HMS Conqueror. She was a 5,400-ton British Churchill-class nuclear-powered fleet submarine which served in the Royal Navy from 1971 to 1990. HMS Conqueror was armed with six 21-inch torpedo tubes. With a top speed of 28 knots, the sub also didn't have to come up to recharge batteries. She was the third of her class, following the earlier HMS Churchill and HMS Courageous. The vessel was built by Camel Laird at Birkenhead, near Liverpool, and after many delays, including sabotaging its gearbox, it was commissioned on November 9, 1971. She was to be the last nuclear sub built by that shipyard. War had broken out in early 1982 between Britain and Argentina due to Argentina's invasion of the Falkland Islands, a British protectorate in the South Atlantic. HMS Conqueror set sail from Faslane Naval Base in Scotland on April 3rd, helmed by Commander Chris Reeford Brown, exactly one day after the Argentinian invasion. The British submarine arrived in the exclusion zone around the Falkland Islands 21 days later. The order was that it scan the area for Argentinian shipping. The main surveillance focus of the sub was Argentina's aircraft carrier, the 25 de Mayo, or 25th of May. On April 30th, the sub spotted the Argentine light cruiser, the General Belgrano, which was heading southwest of the Falklands. It was just outside the exclusion zone imposed by the British on all shipping. The fear by Britain's fleet admiral, Sandy Woodward, was that the General Belgrano, together with the 25 de Mayo aircraft carrier, was preparing a pincer attack against the British fleet. Commander Woodward thus requested permission from London to sink the General Belgrano. In the time it took for the request to be granted, the Argentinian cruiser retreated west from its attack position, away from the Falklands. Nevertheless, on May 2nd, the HMS Conqueror got the clearance from London and launched three Mark VIII torpedoes at the General Belgrano, two of which struck the ship and exploded. The cruiser was immediately stricken and sank within 20 minutes. Tragically, the General Belgrano was unable to issue a media signal because of electrical failure, whilst poor visibility meant that two escorting Argentinian destroyers, the ARA Piedra Buena and ARA Bouchard, were unaware of the sinking until hours later. Additionally, the two Argentinian destroyers had continued on their course westward, dropping depth charges. By the time the cruisers realized what had happened to the General Belgrano, it was already dark and the weather had worsened. Military experts were determined that the General Belgrano never stood a chance against the might of the British nuclear submarine, even if the 12,300-ton cruiser was armed with 15 6-inch guns, 8 5-inch guns, and a host of lighter anti-aircraft guns. There was outrage by the public and the country's ruling junta in Argentina when news broke about the General Belgrano's sinking, and so the crew of HMS Conqueror had to face numerous attempts to locate her by Argentina's air force for days after the attack. It's worth noting that the legality of sinking the General Belgrano caused a furor both in the immediate and longer-term aftermath of its sinking. There had been disagreement between Britain and Argentina as to the exact delineation of the maritime exclusion zone. Britain had expressly stated that it no longer considered the 200-mile exclusion zone as the limit of its military action, which it relayed through a message passed via the Swiss Embassy in Buenos Aires to Argentina's government nine days before the sinking. Also furiously contested between the two nations was whether the General Belgrano had been returning to port at the time of the sinking. Argentina claimed that it was, in fact, heading home, whilst Britain contended it was not. The British pointed to Admiral Juan Lombardo's order on May 1, 1982, that all Argentina's naval units seek out British forces around the Falklands and launch a massive attack the following day, May 2nd. That the British held clearly meant that the cruiser was preparing for an attack. The controversy was finally settled in 2003 when Hector Bonzo, the captain of the General Belgrano, confirmed that the cruiser had actually been maneuvering for an eventual attack and not sailing away from the exclusion zone. He stated that the orders from Buenos Aires were to sink any British ship he could find. Captain Bonzo also refuted any allegations that the HMS Conqueror's actions were somehow illegal. He contended that the British submarine had merely carried out its duties according to the accepted rules of war. Argentina's Navy has declared since 1995 that the sinking was a legitimate act of war. However, that didn't stop the president of Argentina, Cristina Fernández de Kirchner, from claiming in 2012 that the sinking of the General Belgrano was, quote, a war crime. HMS Conqueror never fired again throughout the war, but rather provided valuable help to the British war effort by tracking military aircraft departing from Argentina. At the conclusion of the war, the sub returned to its base in Scotland. It flew a Jolly Roger flag adorned with torpedoes, a customary act of Royal Navy submarines after a kill. 
The submarine never took part in any other conflicts and was decommissioned in 1990. The periscopes, captain's cabin, and main control panel from the submarine's control room are on display in the Royal Navy Submarine Museum in Gosport, Hampshire, on England's south coast. To this day, HMS Conqueror remains the only nuclear-powered submarine to have successfully engaged an enemy ship with torpedoes. <laughs>